Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I want to take a look at having a greyhound if you don't have a garden. It is still possible to adopt a greyhound if you don't have a garden, but what issues might you need to think about? Things that you might have to consider. I'd like to share some of those with you in this video. lived in the same house since I started homing greyhounds back in 2003 and I'm lucky enough to have a garden and this has been invaluable to me in a number of ways which I'd like to share with you. Not having a garden doesn't mean you can't home a greyhound but it will influence their experience of retirement and also your experience of having that greyhound. First up let's look at toileting and house training. With a garden, that is relatively straightforward. You can start by just having the door open and allowing free access to the outdoors. If you usher them out at regular intervals, then hopefully they learn to pee and with time you can build on that and put that on a queue should you wish to. If you don't have a garden, that is going to have to be much more structured. You'll need to take them out to toilet at regular intervals on their collar and lead or their harness and you will have to be more careful about anticipating their needs. I do find their signals can be very subtle, so there could be more accidents. I have had a number of boys, such as Floppy here, although he's not the first, who would pee up their bowl immediately after finishing a meal. So with a garden, this is relatively easy to manage, but if you didn't have a garden, you might have to get them ready for a walk before you feed them so that as soon as they take the last morsel out of the bowl, you can head off out through the door and take them to pee to avoid a puddle on the floor. Another issue is around dark nights, bad weather, and other times that might not be great for going out, such as when you or they are poorly. So. We do need to take them out each and every day in some way or other. If it's really wet, if it's snowy, if it's icy, if it's really hot, might just use the garden. And if they don't feel like walking, we don't go. But without a garden, you will still need to go out regardless at regular intervals for them to toilet. And some greyhounds are really not impressed with going out in bad weather. So this could actually cause um, some sort of conflict between you and the dog. And also with things like upset tummies, if they're poorly during the night, are you going to be comfortable out walking around in your pyjamas down the road at three in the morning with a coat on? Or if you are feeling poorly, if you have a garden, then you can just open the door. But if you don't have a garden, you still have to get them out to toilet. So these are things that are worth thinking about. Are you going to be prepared to do what is needed so that they can toilet at times when really you'd rather not be going out. Another area to think about is about the dog being off lead. So being able to move around in their own way without you having control of what they do. Many dogs are walked off lead a lot of the time. It's quite normal. And they get a chance to make their own decisions about where to sniff, about where to go to some extent and at what speed, obviously within reason. With greyhounds, it's much more common for the dog to stay on the lead. I always think it's a privilege to have a greyhound that can go off lead, and it's not something we should assume is going to happen, especially in the first few months. So this can restrict their choices. They're always going to be aware of that lead attaching them to you, and it takes away that sense of freedom. They might be able to wander at the end of the lead, but it's not quite the same as being totally free to make their own choice. So being able to wander in a garden does allow them to have a little bit more freedom that they will miss out on if you don't have one. So think about whether there are places you can go that would allow you to have the dog off lead, such as a secure field, a paddock, perhaps visiting a friend who has a garden or visiting places where there's a secure area for dogs to be off lead, obviously depending on how your dog is with others. And just being outside can be of benefit to them. Floppy here loves to be in the shed. He's admiring the garden. If we didn't have the garden, he couldn't do that. Mine take themselves out to sunbathe. They mooch around sniffing the plants. They chase off the squirrels. 
they just like to have a change of scenery even if they don't go out they like to lie by the back door when it's open and scent the air so they might take in the different smells we have to remember that they get so much from being able to sniff the air in a way that we just don't appreciate and I also take them outside to have smelly or greasy treats that I don't want in the house so there is a benefit for me as well there there's also the matter of zoomies zoomies are by nature unpredictable we never know when we might get the urge to be overcome by excitement and the same happens with our dogs they are prompted to go silly when they're prompted they don't turn it on on demand so I often see people on social media saying, oh, I took my dog to the dog field and it was a very expensive five minutes because all they did was lie down. It's a bit of a standing joke with greyhound owners. So you might tempt them into zoomies when you book a nice open space for them to do it in, but that might not be when they're in the mood. Having a garden allows them to express themselves in that way when they feel like it. And if you don't have a garden then do be prepared for zoom is to happen indoors because they're not necessarily going to be able to wait until you feel it's the right time for this to happen especially if you have a younger dog so to me a key element of all of this is about having choice and having autonomy over what they do and when they do which is something that helps boost their confidence same as it does with us so a garden lets them have a bit more control and a bit more variety in their life. So if you don't have one, do think about how you can offer that to make their life better, more exciting, more interesting in other ways. So how can you enrich their lives in the way that having a garden does? Can you visit the park and hang out? Can you go for a safari? Can you join a greyhound walk? There are ways to manage but do think that through before you decide to go ahead if you don't have an enclosed garden of your own. That's all for today. We'll be back again soon with more videos for you. So bye for now. Look out for new videos every Monday and why not subscribe so you don't miss out.